You must have thought I was boo-boo the fool out here. That's crazy. I feel like I'm such a mess these days. I don't know if it's just in my head or my hair is actually playing with me, but that's how I'm feeling. Hey loves, it's A back on your screen with another one. Hope you're all well. Grab a drink, grab a snack. Today I got some black tea. I don't even know how to pronounce it, but it smells good, so we'll see. But this is gonna be another one of them story times where I'm gonna make a compilation out of it. These are all the reasons why I don't have a best friend. I got five stories for you today. Let's just say things got a little messy. But I hope you guys enjoy this one. If you do, you know what to do. Tap the like, comment down below if you relate, and let's go. Okay, so boom. To protect the privacy of the people I'm talking about, there's no smoke anymore. I've spoken to everyone except for one person about the situations that occurred, but I'm still gonna switch out the names. So since people come into your life for different reasons and seasons, let's call them months. We'll start off with April since that's an actual name. So April was my friend from university. I had known her for what, three, four years at the point of this fallout. What had happened was we went to New York for reading week. My boy's like, hey, do you wanna go to New York? I said, yes. His friend, we'll call her Kay, was driving. So there was room for one more person. He said, I can invite a plus one. I chose April. Fast forward, we're in New York. The first night is amazing. We're five minutes away from Times Square. We're staying at this really old fashioned boutique hotel. It's giving a little bit of the shining, but it's still chic with it. By the end of the first night, Litlisha comes out. I was young and dumb. You know how it is in your uni years. The next morning, why is it that I'm counting my cash and I'm missing a hundred dollar bill? I told April K and my boy, and they're like, oh my God, what happened? I said, I don't know. Either I was so tipsy that I over tipped or someone took it. And instantly when I said that, April said, who would steal money out of your wallet and not take the whole wallet? I said, I don't know, but either I over tipped, I lost it or someone took it. Those are the only three options. The rest of the entire trip, April was so sure that Kay took it. The way she saw it, my homeboy is not gonna take $100 since he was the one that covered the hotel. Obviously it wasn't her. I couldn't blame Kay because one, Kay was our ride to New York. I don't want smoke with the person driving us back to Canada. Two, I don't want to accuse someone if I'm not 100% sure it was them. And three, Letlisha, she wasn't accountable. She wasn't responsible. So who am I to blame if I don't even know, right? April's one of those protective friends and gets very territorial. So it was to the point where the third or fourth night we were there, she brings up the situation again. And we're at dinner with my homeboy, Kay, her and a couple other friends. And she's saying these things loud enough for Kay to hear. And it makes it so awkward because I didn't put it on Kay. But here April is pretty much saying like, who else would take something from your wallet and your wallet still be there? If it was someone else, they would have just taken your whole wallet. Why didn't you call her out about it? X, Y, Z and this. And I was like, ah, because I don't know. I don't think it was her. If I did, I would have confronted her. Not me talking to you guys with something in my teeth. As I was saying, she just made the dinner really awkward because she didn't have to bring it up then that she thought Kay was a suspect. The last couple days were kind of rocky. I was cold one day, so we had to go to Dwayne Wade to get an extra pair of socks. April made a big stink about it. She was also hangry, so she got so aggressive with all of us. At one point, my boy pulled me aside and he said, She's not usually like that, right? I said, no, I never seen the side of her before. I was apologizing. I felt embarrassed for her being my plus one. The night before we left, April started with her ish again. She started going off, blah, 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 as we're walking back to the hotel from a night out about how I was fake and phony and how I treat my new friends better than my old friends. I thought that was so weird considering that technically she was one of my newer friends. I started to agree with her. I'm like, yeah, whatever you say I am, I am. If you think I'm fake and phony, you know me for X amount of years. This is how you feel. At least we know it's out in the clear. That made her even more angry because she knew I was being sarcastic. At one point, I'm like, listen, I don't want to have this discussion with you. I don't know what you want. She said, you know, this entire trip, you've been paying more attention to Kay and your homeboy. What about me? I've been there for you X, Y, and Z, this, that, and the third. I said, the four of us have been attached at the hip. It wasn't like two of us went off and did our own thing at any part during the trip. We were always together. There was no me paying more attention to somebody else. And I said, even if I was, what does it matter? I'm not your man. I don't have to tend to you 24 seven. I don't understand why you've been like this the entire trip, but I'm not here for it. 
And I said, we're not having this discussion. And she kept going off, which annoyed me even more to the point where my boy and Kay walked ahead and started having a conversation. You know, the conversations to pretend like there's no drama happening around them. At one point, my boy is like, hey, and I thought he was saying, hey, as in shut up or stop or on a trip, enjoy it. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. He was saying, hey, off in the distance, we could see our lobby had fire trucks, alarms, anyone who might have been in the building at the time in the lobby area past the front doors. You could see straight through to the elevators that were opened and it was Niagara Falls. I'm talking Jumanji. You know the scene I'm talking about. It was crazy. I was so shocked. I said, oh my gosh. And then you wouldn't believe this. April kept going on about whatever she was venting to me about. I said, do you not see what's happening to our hotel? So the three of us walked ahead, leaving her a little bit behind and she kept going off. And I just couldn't believe that our building that we were staying in was flooding. And my best friend at the time was still trying to get at me. I just, so we get to the concierge. We ask what's going on. They say there's a pipe burst on the floor underneath us and the floor underneath that one is completely flooded. Remember I said it's an older building, so we don't know what's going on with the infrastructure. Is it gonna collapse? Are we needing to be evacuated? What about our belongings? We're not from here, we need to get home tomorrow. At one point, the three of them run up the stairs to go to the seventh floor to get their belongings and their passport, even though the concierge said no. I went to the firefighter because I figured he would know if it was safe to go up. He said, people are going up. I'm not gonna stop them because most people that are here are tourists and they wanna get their passport, their belongings, whatever, but I wouldn't recommend it. Just hold tight for 10 to 20 minutes. I said, all right, bet. What's 10 or 20 minutes to save my life? If someone who sees this stuff all the time is saying it ain't safe to go up yet, my mom didn't raise no fool. One thing my mom always said to me is don't be a follower. So I wasn't gonna go chase my friends to go up to get a passport to risk my life. Not the one. Anyway, as the story goes, 10 or 20 minutes pass. They get the flooding under control. They say it's safe enough to go up and get your belongings, but stay on standby because they may have to evacuate again. I take my time going up those stairs. I didn't work out every day the way I do now. I was out of breath when I got to our room. When I got there, the three of them have all their stuff packed up, chilling on the bed. What took you so long? What do you mean what took me so long? The firefighter said it wasn't safe to go up yet. I wanted to wait downstairs. Then April started again with her nonsense. Why are you so irresponsible? You would have lost your passport. Then how would you have gotten home? I said, I'm sure the Canadian embassy is around here somewhere. I would rather keep my life, go down the street and get a new passport, even if that means I have to stay here one or two more days, first risk my life. Does that make sense to you? And I think all three of them didn't like that because it was subtle shade, I can't lie. So they all started giving me a little attitude and I just said, hey guys, we're on a vacation. We just experienced a traumatic experience. <laughs> Can we just make the most of what we have left? And we did the best. But there was two other incidences once we got back to Toronto. And I just said, you know what? I've seen enough. Even our mutual friends at the time would ask me, why is she like that with you? Because out of nowhere, out of the blue, she just give me attitude or attack my character. And it's one thing to have constructive criticism for your friend, to want them to develop or see their ways or grow. Hey, you know my name starts with A, but I'm no angel. I'm always accountable. I know I'm not a perfect friend or a perfect person, but at the end of the day, I wanna know the part I play in problems so I can grow. But in every circumstance where she popped off on me, I can tell you guys in all honesty, it was unnecessary. I would not have, I can't say I was perfect or right every time, but it was unnecessary. So I just said, you know what, if. She's not like this with our other friends. There must be something about me that brings it out of her. So let me just exit stage left. A couple months passed, my birthday came around and she got mad that I didn't invite her. I said, hey, would you rather me be a fake friend, what you accused me of in New York by inviting you when you know we are not good? Or would you rather us go out for coffee one day, we hash it up, and then maybe the following year you can come to my birthday authentically? Let me know down below which one you would prefer because I'm not the one to go to someone's birthday party when we have animosity. That's just too awkward for me, especially when you know maybe your mutual friends know what's going on too. I'll pass on that. Story number two, we're gonna call her May, is about a friend who reminds me a lot of Molly from Insecure. She was an only child and I don't want no smoke with the only children watching this, but you guys are different. I'm just gonna call a spade a spade, okay? There's something about 
growing up in a household and being the only one, it's not that you're spoiled, but sometimes you lack the awareness that it's not always about you. There's no fault to you. I can't even be mad. I was an only child for seven years, so I kind of got a little bit of both worlds in my childhood. And there is a clear difference. I say this to say that I was gonna call her Molly. May is a type of friend where she wants to tell you what's going on in her life. She's venting, she's sharing, she's experiencing. But when it's your turn to share experience and show, she ain't got time. I remember when I first met her, she made a joke with me about another one of our mutual friends. She said whenever that girl went on her vent sessions or ranted, she would say, oh, my mom's calling me on their line because no one can ever say anything when your mom's calling you on the other line. So when she started doing that to me, I knew what time it is. I said, I know I can't see well, but I see what's happening here. So one day I got frustrated because I said, every time I'm talking to you about this situation with my boyfriend at the time, your mom is conveniently on the other line. And it's not like she calls me back or anything. It's just like, oh, my mom's on the other line. But for two hours, we were talking about your stuff. And as soon as the two minutes I'm talking about mine, you ain't got time. Okay, I see you, bet. I say this all to say, that's the type of person I was dealing with, but I said, you know, everyone's flawed, no one's perfect. I got my flaws and all, so I'll work with it. But the last straw for me was when I featured her here on my platform. She didn't speak to me for weeks. I said, okay, what is it now? When I finally got through to her, she played it off all cool, like everything was okay. Then out of nowhere, she said, you know, I was speaking to a friend of mine and she agreed with me that you didn't promote me properly. I said, what? She explained that because I didn't put her handle in the description box, that I didn't properly promote and share her platform. <laughs> I put her handle in the video. It came up the same way Alicia Inc. comes up whenever I do my intros. But apparently that wasn't enough because I didn't put it in the description box. She said, you put all your stuff there. I said, what? No, 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 I set YouTube up so that it auto-populates whenever I upload a video. I don't even have to go in and change that ish. All I gotta do is add more to the down bar about the new video, but I don't change my Patreon, Twitter, Facebook, whatever's there is there. If you go in my description box and check certain videos, you'll see it's all the same structure. If you're a content creator, you know. If you don't, maybe you don't know. So I thought in my head, oh, maybe she just doesn't understand. But the way she was getting at me for the rest of the conversation, I realized she truly believed that I undermined her and she said, you know, I see how other people coordinate and collaborate and I didn't feel the energy was the same. It was more about you than me. That's when I lost it. I went to her house. We filmed for nearly three hours. I got that content down to 20 minutes and she complained about how I cut out so much of her parts when in actuality, I cut out most of me speaking. I created this experience so that I could put her on the map with my followers. It wasn't like she did a blog post about me on her brand and her stuff because I knew what she was doing was something I believed in. I even for my intro was going off about how amazing she was. She got mad at me for cutting down my content 20 minutes. I said, do you wanna check my analytics? The type of videos I make, especially back then, people tap off around five minutes. If you go back a couple years back, you'll see it was only until recently that I started doing content longer than 10 minutes. So for me to do 20 minute video back then, was different for me. I know some people do hour long videos now, especially with the weekly vlogs. Even my vlogs are still half an hour or less. So to do a couch sit down video was a lot for me. And I knew it was a lot for my viewers who weren't used to that, but she didn't want to see any of that. She just kept accusing me of being fake. I just said, where is this coming from? Why are my closest friends assuming that I'm fake? What do I need to fix about myself? Anytime someone accuses me of something, I have to double check and ask myself. And I come to the conclusion, no or maybe yes sometimes, and what am I gonna do to fix it? But everything she said, every reason she gave, I just said, nah, that, that ain't it. Hope that you knew me better enough to know I'm not like that. The energy I put into creating this piece of content, I wouldn't undo it by undermining you. I wouldn't have done it at all in the first place. That was on the back of both of our minds for some time. I remember she was going through something with her man at the time, same with me. Let me just put it out. I was on a break with my boyfriend at the time. Zero out of 10 do not recommend. A break is a breakup when you're too cowardly to say what's up. That's all I gotta say. It doesn't matter how many rules and stipulations you put in it, a mess is gonna happen. So as I'm going through that, she's going through her thing too. And you know what about misery, you commiserate together, right? Why is it that she hits me with the whole, my mom's on the other line again. Then the next day she calls me about something regarding work 
that she's already talked to me about three or four times. I was heading to work, so I had to hop on the subway. So I just said to her, hey, you know what it is. You know my opinion. You know what's best for you. You know what you got to do. But I'm hopping on the subway, so. And she's like, oh, okay. I thought that was such a strange response. But then I realized I've never, ever told her, like, we're not having this conversation. Even in a nice way like that. Ever since then, she was kind of awkward with me. I would check in with her. She'd have excuses. At one point, I'm like, hey, if I did something wrong, can you let me know as a friend so I can be better to you? And if you don't want to be friends so I can be a better person, I just need to know. Oh no, I'm just working on myself. So I gave her some space. I wished her a happy birthday. She said, thank you. My birthday rolled around. Crickets. I said, I see what's happening here and the friendship kind of eroded. I looked back and I said to myself, you know what? She was a type of friend where it was always what she wanted to do and where she wanted to go. Very rarely if I said, hey, let's do this, would she actually be down for it? But if it was her idea and her thing, I remember one time I told her I didn't want to do something and then she lied to me and said it was another event and I was like, wait, is this the same event I told you I didn't want to go to? Yeah, but I knew you didn't want to come to this and I knew it was very important and I wanted more supporters here and I said, but I told you I didn't want to go. Like the event turned out to be good. In a way, I'm glad that I went and I was open-minded enough to stay once I realized what it was. But a true friend shouldn't try to trick you to go to an event to promote something. You know what I'm saying? It was just a lot of sketchy things like that. Anywho, next story. This one regarding a girl we'll call June. Maybe a month or two after my follow with May, I started having problems with June. She was one of my three best friends at the time. I lost them all within a span of three months. Hmm. That must be a record out there somewhere. The story with June is, it was actually my bad. I gotta keep it real. So June was probably one of the most supportive people I've ever met. And we met at work. So I knew her about three, four years and then things started to fall apart. You know, the thing about life is it shows you things and if you don't take it in, it's gonna show you again, show you again, show you again and then slap you side the face. So I was working with June for a few years and I noticed the manager made comments because she was, let's just call a spade a spade. Pretty privilege was in full effect. She was from out of the country. She had an accent. I don't know what it is about Canadians, but they're so enamored by accents. She was a hard worker, don't get me wrong. And she was not just beautiful, she was smart and like I said, compassionate. That's how we became best friends. But I did notice that she had a lot of things work in her favor that actually were to my demise that she never called out. I'm not sure if you worked in a restaurant before, but when you come in, there's no end time. And most of the times I was the first one on, which means I'm supposed to be the first one off. But because she had plans or her ride came early, she would leave knowing that I had things to do, places to go, or I was just tired. And anytime I talked to the manager, like, hey, why are you letting her go when she came in last? And I've been here three hours before her, look at her. Look at her. I mean, I'm saying, what do you mean look at her? Now, I'm no beast. I don't need to compare myself to my friends. I just need to be respected. And I called her out on it too. And she said, well, you know, I asked you what time you'd be finishing. And then I told my friend and then the ride came and I can't keep him waiting. And then if he's gonna go, he drove all the way here. Back then I cared too much about other people. Nowadays I'd be like, no one told you to call your friend. Your shift's not done, I'm leaving now. But back then, because she was my friend, I said, okay. But I always thought in the back of my head, why is this happening? <sighs> Fast forward to her birthday. I feel really bad about this. I was going through a really bad breakup. She knew it. I tried my best. I was at dinner. I had conversations with her and her fiance at the time. We went to karaoke and more friends joined, but I wasn't in a birthday mood. I tried to be, but I can't. When I'm really going through it, I can't fake the funk. So at one point I told myself, you know, just go home because you're bringing the entire energy down. I knew she was upset that I was in a dreary mood and that I left early, but I couldn't stay and be that way. I apologized to her the next day. I could tell that the energy had shifted. I can't even be mad at her because back in the day I used to take my birthdays very seriously so I could see from her side, but I, also thought she knew all the details of what happened with my past relationship and why I was so devastated. Ever since then, we never got past it. To the point where a few years ago, I apologized again. I apologized for other things in the friendship and she apologized too. She said, I should have been more patient with you. Damn right you should have, but for real, for real. It wasn't that it took me that long to realize that I needed to apologize for my ways, not just on her birthday, but I can't even lie to you guys because she was so supportive. A lot of times we would hang out. It's me, vent, 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 vent. It's exhausting. So I had to realize for myself, but also come to the maturity where it's like, even if we're not friends and we never talk ever again, 
as someone who was so important to me in my life, I have to let you know that I apologize. I'm grateful for the experiences we had together and I wish you well. So that's what I did. Really mature moment. It was bittersweet because it's just like, it's a closed book basically, you know? Something about friendship fading, I swear they hurt way worse than any relationship breakup. Maybe because sometimes your friendships last longer than relationships or because they endure while relationships. Something about losing friendships, it just hits different. Story number four, we're gonna call her August because she's giving that type of entanglement vibe. You already know where this is going. So, hmm, deep breath. The long and short of the story with August was, where do I begin? This is the messiest story of all. The reason why August and I fell out is because she knew that my boyfriend at the time was messing with the girl that she was working with. She didn't say anything. What's worse is she alluded to something happening, but we had spoken the year before, like if we ever heard anything or saw anything with our men, we would let each other know up front. So I was confused when she was saying, oh, you know, I think you should call it quits with him, something about this, I just don't trust, X, Y, and Z. And I thought in my mind, is she alluding to knowing something or is she giving her two cents because she doesn't like him because I don't want to make a decision to end a relationship based on what my friend feels, but I would end a relationship based on what she's seen, if you know what I mean. So when I called her the night I found out everything happened, oh my gosh. Then I sat with it for a bit and I said, the math is not mathing. Then I called her up again and she's like, oh, I did see something like the month before. And I thought, how convenient is that in my Cardi B voice? You saw something the month before, which is also when you warned me that you don't trust him and I should end things. Why didn't you just say, yo, I saw a homeboy with X, Y, and Z? That didn't sit well with me. I spoke to a couple close friends and they said, you know what? If you were in her position, maybe you wouldn't. I said, have you met me? I definitely would. I don't care how awkward it would be at work. You're supposed to be my best friend. I will tell you what's happening. I don't want you out here looking like Boo Boo the Fool. So I felt two times betrayed, not just by my boyfriend, but by my friend for not saying anything. I sat with that for a bit and I said, you know what, I'm being too critical. I have to look at it from her side. That would have made work so awkward. Maybe people don't want to overstep. I even spoke to someone who said they told their best friend, their best friend got back with the person and blocked her. So it could go either way. And maybe your friend weighed the options and said, you'll find out anyway. I said yes, but also the fact that we had the discussion before anything ever happened and she knows the type of person I am, I would have just wished for better. I would have just wished that she had said something. That's my standard. I don't know. You can let me know down below if I'm being too critical, but it just, it didn't feel the same. The foundation of any friendship is trust, loyalty, and honesty. And it wasn't that she was being dishonest, but I couldn't trust her to be there for me and to tell me honestly what she saw. I try to make it work. We hung out a couple more times, but the feeling wasn't the same. I just thought, what friendship are we building if during a critical time, you can't tell me you see homeboy messing with homegirl in front of your eyes? Like, I don't, I don't know where to go with this. Like I said, a few of my close friends said, give her a chance or put it behind you. But I just, I just couldn't. To the point where one time she asked me what was wrong, are you mad at me? I said, not necessarily mad, disappointed, which I always think is way worse. Even if I would have turned on her, that's still my choice, right? I would rather know I'm not friends with someone because I told them something they needed to know versus I'm not friends with them because I withheld information they needed to know. Again, I might be wrong, let me know down below. I actually apologized to her too a year ago, just saying, you know, I was, I did overreact and I'm sad our friendship faded and I was intentional in distancing myself because I just felt like there was nowhere to go, but I wish you well. To date, out of everyone I met in my entire life, she still has the biggest heart. Maybe if I was a little less hurt, <laughs> we could have gotten past that, but it's past that point. It is what it is. I wish her well. This last story is not the worst, but the friendship did last the longest, so it still hurt. It's a typical tale of two people growing apart. Rather, she wanted to keep the friendship going, but I felt like where we were going in life was so different. There was nowhere to grow and go. Pretty much, I knew her from high school. I was one way, she was one way. I went to university, I had my experience evolve, grew, 
and she stayed the same. Every time we'd hang out, it was the same thing. Talking about people from high school, I could care less about. I hated high school, by the way. Experiences about the past, the good old days, which I didn't really want to lament on anyway. I would tell her this because I keep it real and she would keep bringing it back to the past. I said, let's talk about what's going on and what we're going to do better going forward. And it was always about the past and I got tired of that. She was a pothead back in the day and I try to convince myself that I didn't care, it didn't bother me, but it did affect me. A lot of times because she was on the quest for weed or she got too high, it affected the vibe. <laughs> for example, story time inception. If you watch my story time birthday, you already know these two tales. She was looking for weed to the point where she couldn't get into my birthday. And I was waiting for her because she was my best friend and she convinced my boyfriend at the time that she was gonna grab that the three of us couldn't get in. So that's how she ruined one birthday. The next birthday, I think was my 21st birthday. So I had planned all these things. She went behind my back and told all my friends, tell her you can't make it. I'm planning a surprise. But the true surprise was she wasn't planning ish. So the day before my birthday, she calls me and she says, hey, what are your plans for your birthday? I was trying to surprise you, but then I couldn't find any places to reserve. I called all your friends and told them to tell you that they are too busy. I said, that's why someone said they have to look after their frog. Cause I said, who has a pet frog? <laughs> and I was just like, why would you do that? You know, I hate surprises. You know, I like planning my birthday cause I like planning things. I already had a plan in place and everyone cancels cause you said you were doing something and you didn't even follow through. I was so confused. What ended up happening that year was I couldn't get a reservation anywhere. A lot of people for whatever reason said last minute they couldn't make it. So the four of us from 20 plus people I invited ended up going to Gabby's. If you live in Toronto, you know Gabby's. It's a really dingy pub. So from a, I don't even know if it was a four star restaurant, but I was bougie with it back in the day, to a pub in a glitter dress, it wasn't okay. And me, like I said, when I'm upset as a Scorpio, it shows on my face. So she was calling me out about being bitter and upset. And I said, how do you expect me to feel? I'm not mad at you, but this is a shitty situation. Then she got mad at me to the point where one of my friends called her out and said, chill, it's her birthday. And then she snapped at her. And I said, no, no, no. What we're not going to do is disrespect my friends when you're technically the reason why we're in the predicament. So we had a falling out over that. Of course, I forgave her because after all, it's just a birthday. But there were still some other shady things that happened. And I said, you know what? Keep seeing things over and over and over again. Play me once, shame on you. Play me twice, I'm the fool. So I said, you know what? Let me just distance myself. Life is in a different space and place anyway. It's not gonna be that strange to stop communicating with her. She noticed, she tried to reach out, which made things difficult. I explained to her why I was giving us space. I mean, I did see her a few times over the years. Our mutual friends try to do the whole, let's plan something, then conveniently cancel the day of so that you guys can have quality time, I said. <laughs> I see you guys, you're trying to build a friendship back. That's cute, but no, it's not for me. One of those times though, I said, you know what? If everyone in our group is efforting for us to be friends again, maybe there's something there that I shouldn't be discarding because I do have a bad habit of discarding people. So I went out, I hung with her and it was the same old thing. I kept telling her, I don't really want to talk about the past. I don't want to talk about my ex-boyfriends or your ex-boyfriends. This is where I'm at now. I'm in a new relationship, I'm in a new job. Things are going well, some things aren't going well. Let's talk about that. Kept bringing back to the past. Then at the end of the dinner, she forgot her wallet. I said, no, especially after what we were talking about, I'm not covering the bill. Cause this girl was complaining about not having money, but buying the most expensive things on the menu. Like where they do that at? Eventually we leave and then she's talking about wanting to go to a store. And I said, your wallet's at home. Oh yeah, I said, mm. She started talking about my ex again. And I said, oh, I already told you, I don't want to talk about the past. Why are we bringing this up? This is like from three, four years ago. So I remember at the end of the night, she hugged me, said some sentiment, and I said, she really doesn't get it, but that's okay. She'll find out on her way. Such a sweet person, but I just grew differently. So that wraps up my five reasons why I don't have a best friend. I have some good friends, but I don't believe in that ride or die energy. People change, things change situations change and with it you have to grow and just decide that sometimes for different seasons and reasons you gotta let people go i wish each and every one of these women in this story time the best they gave me a lot of love respect good insight at the times that i needed the most and i hope that i gave that to them too 
And now we can all flourish in our lives separately. So I don't take it personal. All this taught me is best friends is a title I'm not trying to put on anybody, which is why now all I have is good friends and then fun friends. And I'm okay with that. I don't need to have that best friend, that ride or die. That term for me is not it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, tap the like, comment down below if you relate to any of these scenarios. And until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed. Love and later.